Hi guys, I am Anne and welcome to or welcome back to my channel. Uh, I'm so sorry if you can hear my air conditioning. It is going on because you know what? It's hot outside and we recently got a new air conditioner and it is absolutely divine. So what are we doing today? So today I'm going to be catching up with August of Adventure. I am so behind in all my reading. I've talked about that in my last videos. So I wanna catch up. And so today, today I have four books I'm gonna to try to get through in the next few days, um, hopefully in the next week at the most. So three of these books are technically for, um, August of Adventure and the fourth one is for Garb August. However, the one that is for Garb August actually counts for both of them because it is very much a adventure book. So the first one I'm starting with, um, that is Kidnapped by Robert Louis Stevenson. I read Treasure Island a year or two ago um, and I absolutely loved it, but I haven't read another book by him. I think I might have read some short stories by him, but I want to read this book. I haven't decided exactly for sure what the next book I'm going to do, but I have three options. The next one is Moby Dick by Herman Melville. I have this lovely copy. I love my copy. It's from like the 1940s, I think, so excited about that. And then I have The Seahawk by Raphael Sabatini. This is the same author who wrote Captain Blood, and I have loved Captain Blood for years, but I have not read any other books by Sabatini, so I'm excited to read this. And then the last one is a book that I don't have in physical format, and it's The Sheik by E.M. Hull, which when it came out, it was supposed to be um, very radical and adult. <laughs> um, and controversial uh and it's about a young woman who travels to i don't know if it's just like a vague arabian country it's like an adventure romance novel uh, she falls in love with a sheik basically he kidnaps her because he thinks she's pretty so we'll, we'll see how much i like that one that's the only one i'm like eh, am i gonna enjoy that so we're gonna start with kidnapped and i will let you know how my reading goes as we continue hi i am back and i'm currently halfway done with kidnapped it's an interesting book it's not quite what i was expecting it is set in 1751 and it follows davy david balfour and he is a 17 year old young man from scotland who goes to another village to live with his uncle uh only to learn that his uncle drove his father davy's father out of town and that davy is actually the real heir of this ma massive house so his uncle who wants the house decides to uh dupe davy to get on this ship and sail off to the Carolinas to America and so Davy has to figure out how to escape and this book is extremely fast-paced I will say with um, Treasure Island I think I enjoyed Treasure Island more because there was one cohesive plot because on Treasure Island you have the boy get on a ship and then you follow that ship and the people on it Whereas in this one, he's currently back in Scotland, but in a different area, and he's trying to figure out how to get from the Highlands to another place. So he goes from being with one set of characters to meeting more characters and leaving all those other characters behind. You have a quick paced, um, the book just continues, um, and it doesn't feel like you can really sit and kind of understand the characters and it makes sense because this is supposed to be an adventure but I personally like when things are a little bit slower and you can spend time with the characters a little bit more to get to know them. Davy, I enjoy him. Um, he's a very upright moral individual um, and he's also very clever at getting out of situations of danger so I enjoy his character but outside of his character I don't feel like I understand anyone so I'm not enjoying this book as much as Treasure Island, but I, I am enjoying it. It's it's fun book. Uh, and then I'm going to probably finish this up tonight because it's a pretty quick read. It's only a little over 200 pages. And I think I'm going to start The Sheik next. I can see why it is one of his lesser known classics because it's definitely not as good as his other works that I have read. But it's interesting because it was published in the 1880s, but it is set in the 1750s. And it's during set during the um, Jacobean Revolt. Um, or right after it so you have this conflict of like whether you support king george or not and it's kind of funny 
considering uh, this is not, I believe, the King George the Third that was in the American Revolution that fought against America. This is his father or grandfather. I'm not. I'm not quite sure of this period in English history that much, but I am enjoying some of the political stuff that is more in the background of this. Like uh, at one point he meets a man who is traveling that is a Jacobean and Davy makes the point that, oh, I, I support King George. I'm, I'm a Whig. You have those little hints of the real politics that were going on during that time that is, that is very, very much in the background of this adventure story. So you have that historical detail but it is more of a backdrop to the adventure that's going on. So the adventure is very much the focus. So I will update you probably when I've finished this, maybe a little bit after I've started The Sheik too. couple n new updates. I am currently halfway done with The Sheik by E.M. Hall and I also am about 50 pages in to Moby Dick. I decided to just start both of them at once because they're different enough books. Uh, Moby Dick I am really enjoying but it's definitely not quite what I was expecting. This like high seas adventure revenge tale against a whale. It's more of like a slow type understanding of this character of this man and the world in which he is in. So really interesting but I'm enjoying it. As for the Sheik, so it follows a Diana, can't be bothered to remember her last name, and she's very an impetuous, independent young woman, and her she has traveled around with her brother who is 10 years her senior and he has practically raised her because her parents died when she was quite young. So she uh, has learned to be a little bit spoiled, um, but very independent, and she decides to go on this uh, desert, tour for a month uh, and then rejoin her brother uh, who is in America or something or England and he's trying to find a wife or something like that. So she is in, you know, the Sahara, south of Morocco, that type of area. So, so she she gets um, kidnapped by this sheik and uh, on one hand, like it's very barbarian type romance like he forces himself upon her and they make it seem and eh, not that bad because you know what she needs to learn obedience she needs to learn to adhere to the rules of man and she finally met her match as this man is stronger than her and i'm like i don't think that's a good thing he literally kidnapped her he's like a chief of this group and he basically says yeah i obey no man but my own uh wants and basically I saw you and I wanted you and that's the entire story so far and it's really creepy how they almost make it seem like her independence um is a bad thing and in a sense I I do agree partially with her character because she's very much this like European lady who's like stomping into uh northern Africa and is like you know what I'm in charge here and I know what's best and I'm not going to listen to my guide. I'm just going to do what I want to do. So I understand in her case, I'm like, yeah, she kind of needs to be taught a lesson. But also this guy literally assaults her and takes her as like his woman. And I'm like, that's not a good thing. So <laughs> I I'm very conflicted feelings about this. I don't like how she's presented as like being independent and that is bad in of itself. And I understand like if it's saying, okay, she is not understanding this culture. She's just coming in at like this privileged European woman and saying, yeah, I know better than these people who are my guides. I understand if the message of this book like is she has to be taught a valuable lesson that you can't do that. You have to be able to um, realize that you are not the center of the world. I agree with some of that sentiment, but I feel like the book just misses the mark on that and kind of ignores that aspect entirely for this like very forceful romance and like, oh, he's the barbarian and like um, she is this damsel that can't do anything like, oh, he's so strong. And like, so it's bothering me. <laughs> it's bothering me. I will say the movie is better, which who would have thought 
I would check back with you probably when I finish the chic. Uh, I may have gotten more into Moby Dick. Um, I I'm hoping that once I finish the chic, the other two books I will enjoy a lot better. Okay, I am back and I finished the chic and I'm currently about 100 pages into Moby Dick. Here's the thing, it's very easy to dismiss the t this type of book that the chic is and saying it is valueless because it, it, it says that men can assault women and it's fine. Basically, that's the message in this book. But then there are quite a lot of scenes where I forgot about that element to it and I just really enjoyed the story. Especially the later half of the book gets pretty good, I would say. Um, Diana starts to understand the Sheik more. He was born English. I believe he had an English, English parents or his mother was Spanish, I, I don't remember, and uh, his mother was would be beaten by his father. And so she escaped while they were on vacation in the desert. And just, she was found by this sheik who was the current sheik's the main guy, his adoptive father. And so our sheik was raised by this sheik who he thought was his father but it turned out he was told when he was 19 that no you're actually the son of this english man who was drunkard and beat your mother <laughs> so he um got very cold and callous because of that and you could really understand him more as a person and it justified more what he did except for the assault um and i think this is where the difference between the movie and the book comes in and i think why the movie is better despite its imperfections. Um, I will will put this clip in because the, the there's a great comparison um, scene by scene that are both that is both in the book and in the movie and in the book there is this scene where he has just kidnapped Diana and he kisses her and then he gets pulled away uh, I think in the movie it's because um, there's a sandstorm and the horses are getting loose I don't remember in the book I think it's something different in the book but uh specifically in the movie uh he comes back and he goes into the room where she is sitting and she is sobbing on the bed because she was literally just kidnapped he had this like super creepy look on his face before and now he has this much more serene calm look um and like he feels guilt in what he does and he turns around and he leaves um and in the book he doesn't turn around and leave he assaults her and they sleep together for you know three to four months as long as she's there so that i think is the big difference in the book and the movie is in the movie yes he still kidnaps her but you can kind of understand that he see that he does have good qualities to him and maybe he may force her to kiss him but it's not that bad. <laughs> I feel like I shouldn't be justifying this horrible character that he is, but y you can see the comparison of the book and the movie. And so I feel like certain things are, you can justify it more in your brain, whereas certain things you just can't. And so in the book, I just could never overcome the fact that he'd been assaulting her for literally months. And yes, she falls in love with him. And it's very creepy because it's Stockholm syndrome, very creepy. And then eventually he discovers that, oh no, he doesn't just want to break her and control her. He actually is in love with her too. And they live happily ever after, which is a little bit disturbing. So yeah, I just think the, the, the elements of like, him assaulting her and then her falling in love with him was a little bit creepy but there are some great scenes she gets kidnapped at one point by this like other uh chic or whatever and he has to come save her and there's that's a cool scene uh so that that's where we are with that so i think i'm going to give it two out of five stars i can't justify giving it higher with just how certain subjects were considered good I guess uh then the as for Moby Dick um I, I guess I went into it because you hear a lot of people modern readers say that yeah there's way too much details about whaling in this book and so I went into it with high expectations of having a lot of whaling and so far I'm only 100 pages in um it hasn't been that bad um so far there's only like one big 
chunky section that uh, has discussed whaling and the morality of it and the benefits of whaling and kind of the life of being a whaler, which I've actually found to be really fascinating and I would never have thought I would be interested in whaling. But the writing surprisingly is not as scientific as Jules Verne, but the writing style very much reminds me of Jules Verne, uh, especially 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Uh, but so this book um, follows Ishmael, call me Ishmael, the famous first line, but Ishmael is this very young man, call me stupid, but I thought um, Ishmael and, and Captain Ahab were the same person, and it was just the main character, so no, they're, they're different people. So Ishmael is this young man, he has dreams of adventure, and he decides to join a whaling ship, and he heads out on this voyage with this whaling ship and the captain of the ship is Captain Ahab and right now he's very much a mysterious man like the entire getting ready to go on the ship there were two other captains that were kind of um, helping set things up and pack and get ready for the voyage and this is like a three-year voyage so you have Ahab, the captain, being very mysterious, and I love that aspect. I'm really enjoying it. I will check back with you when I have made better progress on my reading. See you soon. Hi, hello. I am back, and I just finished Moby Dick by Herman Vel Melville. I think I'm going to give it four out of five stars. It does get dense at a few points that uh, really bog down the narrative for me, but for the most part, this is a very entertaining and fun narrative, and it's got a lot more depth than I was expecting. In fact, I think it was so good that I'm going to be doing a full book review, which will probably be out by the time you're watching this video. So I'll link it in the description, I guess. But this one is a really interesting book. I, I, I won't go into more detail because I assume I went into great detail in that book review. So uh, the last book I have to read is The Seahawk. And this one hopefully will take less time. Like Moby Dick, took me like three days to read and um the chic which is like half the length of this took me double that to read so that's kind of sad but uh hopefully the seahawk is a fun light read because moby dick wasn't as fun light adventure as i was expecting it to be but i hope this one is so uh, i will get back to you when i've made some progress in this and we'll see how i round out my adventure time okay i am back and i just finished uh the Seahawk. I ended up not doing a mid video wrap up because I was just so busy this weekend and I read it over the weekend at the times I could, but I ne never had a time where I really had a chance to update you. So it's just the entire book. I finished it and I'm going to, I think, give it four out of five stars, Ugh, maybe closer to five stars. I might end up giving it to five stars. There's a couple things that I didn't like in it, but it's a very fun high seas adventure. So this book follows Oliver Tresillian, who is this English man who is living a very happy life. He's engaged to this young woman, Rosamond, and he has a younger half brother, uh, Lionel, who he is very close to, and he, he kind of raised as a son, so they are very close. And he's just living, you know, his best life. He's also a um, captain of the uh, a military ship, so he's gone a lot, but currently he is back home. However, Rosamond's brother, the the girl he's engaged to, um, Peter, her brother does not like Oliver at all. So they're on. Uh, getting into uh, scrabbles a lot and massive arguments. So what happens is one night they have a major uh, row and argue and afterwards Oliver returns home and um, his brother comes home a little bit later, Lionel, and confesses to murdering Peter. Uh, and Oliver decides because he loves his brother so much to cover up the murder. Um, not to cover it up, but just to cover up the fact and not admit that it was Lionel who killed him. So a lot of people in town believe it was actually Oliver because he's the one that had the row with him. So what happens? Lionel gets consumed with this terror that Oliver is going to betray him. So his own half-brother, Lionel, decides to sell him to basically pirates who are going to sail um, to the Barbary coasts um, of northern Africa, so Algiers around there, and sell him to be a slave. That's basically the story. And um, what happens is Oliver ends up uh, befriending this powerful 
uh, Middle Eastern leader, this pirate leader, and converts to Islam and becomes a powerful pirate captain in his own right. So five years later, he returns to England, having learned that Rosamond is actually engaged to his brother. And he's, of course, furious. He wants to seek revenge on both of them because he believes that Rosamond betrayed him and he knows that Lionel betrayed him. And so he kidnaps them and takes them to Algiers. And there's more adventure, but I don't want to give spoilers because that's the first third of the book, what I just said. And so it's very much a high seas adventure. Um, it's very similar to Captain Blood by Raphael Sabatini, uh, which starts off very similarly where um, Peter Blood is convicted of a crime he didn't do. And he's uh, shipped off to the Americas where he is bought by this uh, plantation owner's daughter uh, and then he ends up escaping with a bunch of the slaves and takes over a ship and becomes a pirate captain who's sailing the seas. So both are very similar even though this one is very much set on the North African coast whereas Captain Blood is set on the Americas, Caribbean, that type of area. Um, I will say I still think I enjoy Captain Blood better. Maybe it's the nostalgia in me speaking but this one is an exceptional adventure book especially for how similar it is. I also enjoyed how he doesn't, Raphael Sabatini d doesn't necessarily take a very negative view of Islam. It's just there. And I feel like a lot of um, more modern writers um, take a negative view of religion in general. Like religion itself is betray portrayed as being a bad thing. And in this one, yeah, there are bad Muslims, there are bad Christians, but it's not necessarily because they're Christian or because they're Muslim. So I enjoyed the depiction of religion in this book. I also really enjoyed Lionel as kind of the main antagonist. He wasn't the only antagonist, but he, he was a, a main antagonist because he's, he's so pathetic and he's doing all these things because he wants to survive and not necessarily because he's like this very intelligent, conniving, evil individual. So he's a very unique villain in a sense. So I enjoyed him. I also enjoyed Oliver. Uh, he, his character very much transforms from the beginning to the end. In the beginning, he's very much confident, debonair, and because of his betrayal by his brother, he just becomes more vengeful, becomes more vicious. And then when he realizes that what he is becoming is a monster, especially when he reunites with Rosamond, um, he kind of changes back and becomes a good person and kind of forgives his brother in many ways. Kind of slight spoilers, but no details. Um, but so I really enjoyed this book. It's a very interesting book. The, the main criticism I had was for Rosamond. She's She's one of those damsel in, the dis damsel in distress type girls. Um, and she so easily believes the worst about Oliver. And like, you can kind of understand why she would, but I, I, she was frustrated to frustrating to read, especially as she is one of, I guess, two female characters that comes into the entire book. And uh, I really enjoyed Arabella uh, Bishop, who is the love interest in Captain Blood. I loved her character. She was just very feminine, but also snarky. And she told him off. And Rosamond t tells Oliver off as well, but it's not as impactful. So yeah, I feel like she was definitely a downgrade from Captain Blood, but everything else, I enjoyed this book so much. So there are all the books that I'm going to be reading for this vlog. I'm so excited to have gotten all these done. This coming week, I will be actually reading uh, garbage books for garbage August. Uh, and so getting my trash stuff done because I've gotten most of my adventure done now. I feel like it's easier for me to like focus on doing one readathon for a week and then the next week doing another readathon as opposed to um, trying to do two readathons at the same time. So uh, August of Adventure for me is kind of complete. I read technically four books for it. Um, I have the Da Vinci Code more to read, but as a lot of people commented in the video where I said I was going to read it, a lot of people argued that it was trash. So I'm gonna just include it in my uh, trash reads uh, for next week, even though I don't necessarily think it's quite the same type of trash that you think of as the quintessential trash bean. But I look forward to doing that. And have you read any of these four books? Let me know your thoughts down in the description. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, like, subscribe. I post every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 6 p.m. Eastern time, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye!